Folks, welcome to a very special video of Alpha Investments. Today is the very first video ever, an introduction to the world of Lego on Alpha Investments. My name is Rudy. You're watching the Timmy's Empire Basement Hoarding, Collecting, and Obsessive Compulsive Rudy channel. Today we're going to have a basic concept and introduction of how Rudy views Lego. So first we're going to start with the company name. Obviously it's not Legos. The actual company itself is actually Lego. People talk about collecting Legos. They're usually talking about, I guess, plural bricks, but it is collecting or investing and enjoying the world of the Lego brand. Um, for those of you who don't know, Lego's been around a really long time. And they actually start off, I think they actually start off some like wooden pieces and things like that. It was a really crazy history on it. You should, you should check it out. So let's get into some basic concepts of how I view this industry. Um, I've been doing this for a couple years, not very long time. I'm not going to lie and say 10, 20, 30 years. I've, I was a big fan of the world of Legos and the company Lego um, back in the 90s when I was younger. So one of the first things I went back and started putting money into would be the uh, 6080 and 6081 Old Castle series. So some of these old ones here. <coughs> So here we have an original uh, Lego 6081 Castle Series, brand new. Uh, new in box, unopened bags, blah, blah, blah. This was where it all started with me. This was my favorite thing. It even had a castle with a trap door where you could make the ghost fall into like the dungeon and stuff like that. Um, I always loved the display and packaging of them. It always kind of did it for me. So, um, when I started to go back about a couple years ago, and I wanted to diversify and collect and expand my exposure to the world of Lego and Legos. Um, I started with the older stuff. I didn't really make a video on this concept for a long time. Because if you watch YouTube and you watch like eBay and the open market, a lot of these old Lego sets don't really have a lot of liquidity and they don't have a lot of supply. Like when you look at the old 6080, 6090 series of the Lego castles trying to find unopened or factory sealed versions of these things some have zero for sale and some like here's another great one this is the 6082 uh fun fact and again we'll have more videos on this in the future fun fact very old lego sets only have four digit serial numbers whereas if you look at a new you look at a new nintendo so if you look at the new nintendo series for example this particular oh sorry it's the back if you look at the nintendo series as you can see it's a 71, uh, 71, 374, so it is a five-digit serials, tells you the pieces, and of course, uh, you should at least be 10 years or older, at least have 18 haircuts to build this set. So usually, this every Lego set has a serial number that identifies that particular set, and that is how the Lego company operates. So the obviously, when you see old four-digit serial numbers like this, especially, that have the old displays that will open up and give you the awesome experience, you don't even have to... You don't even have to Take it apart. You can experience. You can see everything, and the unique pieces with the certain logos and everything, certain minifigures and all this stuff. And yes, folks, Lego characters are called minifigs, or minis, or minifigures, or minifigurines. Most people in the industry talk about you have a certain rare minifig or stuff like that. Um, and like I said, on the top here, you'll usually see the names, the sets, the actual number on there, and many times the set name. Sometimes not even in English. They have different languages on there. And again, back in the day, 80s and 90s era Legos were, were, became huge in the United States, but they were really big overseas. Like outside the U.S. is really where the world of Lego really became a thing. So, you know, I expanded and started buying all the Legos that I'm, I'm a fan of for long term and collecting and kind of looking at it as a diversifying to my portfolio. Um, I like unopened, factory sealed bags, things like that. I don't like... If you're going to open and build the set, buy a second one, open, build and enjoy it, keep it, display it, put it back in the box, sell it for half price, because you literally paid... Let's say, for example, so if you buy this Nintendo set here, let's say, I don't know what this is on... If you go to your local store, what this is, what, $250 plus tax? So let's say this is $275. For $275, you can buy this. It's a blast to build. This thing actually moves the screen... You can actually, the screen moves and you kind of simulate the Mario game. The system and everything pops up. I mean, it's a phenomenal building experience. But after that, 
you know, if you, you can literally sell it for probably 50 cents on the dollar. So if you're into it for 275, you can probably sell it even used and just keep it all take good pictures for probably 150 to 200 on eBay. So you can enjoy a lot of these things. And like I said, that is a really you, Lego similar to magic and CCGs is a really therapeutic, enjoyable building experience. I've always loved it. It's, it's a very, I've always been a fan of the builder and I love seeing something from pieces and you can just start seeing something form. It's a very, to me, again, it's a very therapeutic, very calming thing for me. I've always enjoyed it since I was a kid. So if you're looking at, well, Rudy, you know, if you only like sealed ones that aren't open, that's boring, which one of the reasons I like the really old sets, you can open the flap and experience it. But again, if you, if you really want to build a 6082, for example, the old Dragon's Den, or what's it called? Dragon's Lair? Uh, Fire Breathing Fortress. If you want to build one of these things, you know, I don't recommend spending a couple thousand dollars to get an unopened one with a gem mint cape and pieces. And, you know, I wouldn't spend a couple grand to get that, this particular set. I would buy a used one on eBay for maybe a hundred to three hundred bucks. Buy a really nice complete one with instructions, everything, and you can still experience it and build it. That's how I recommend approaching this particular hobby, okay? So I want to get that out of the way. So if you really like something, I recommend buying more than one, keeping one sealed, and then opening, building, and keeping displaying, or putting it back and selling it to get it out of your system, build it, and also, Lego is one of those things where one of the many variables that impacts the value long term, and there's about 10 different variables that calculate this stuff, but one of them is the build experience. A set that's really enjoyable to build tends to be opened and built more, which means there's tends to be less sealed ones in existence. Now, I'm going to caution all of you. In 2023, with Lego itself being more collectible and investable and becoming more mainstream, there are, just like Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the West Coast, you know, all these fancy people, they are making more different sets, more supply of the sets, they are not putting the Lego sets into retirement for longer periods of time. So let's pause right there. So again, this is an intro video. We're going to keep it very simple. If you guys like this type of video, I will show more of the other rows and alleys and the other supply I have. I'm just giving you guys a little intro here. Um, Lego sets go into retirement when the Lego company feels it's necessary. They will announce, you know, retiring soon or something like that. Retiring means it goes out of print. In the Lego world, we don't stay out of print. We say a set is retired. In the CCG world, if you, if you come from my magic and all the other uh, Yugleos and Pokemons and everything, um, we talk about things going out of print and last call. And in the Lego world, historically, sets would last between 6 to maybe 18 months. Maybe half a year. The average set lasts a year. And sometimes two years was the normal lifespan that they would produce a Lego set before just saying, we're not going to make any more, we're moving on to newer sets that we can sell more of. Now, recently, there are some sets looking at, you know, Ferraris and Lamborghinis and tree houses and certain Technics and things that have been in print longer due to just, they're just milking it, I guess you could say. Or they have a huge, I, see, I don't think they're reprinting or remanufacturing Lego sets a lot. I think in 2021, just like the trading card world, 2020 from 2021 block, they increased the manufacturing quantity of many Lego sets so they feel like they're in print or in production longer. I believe, similar to the CCG world, there is a lot of overlay. I think the Lego brands saw the tendies and the money, and they increased production of 2020-2021 era products. In 2022, they saw a big pullback in the crash, as we saw in all asset classes. In 2023, things are a little bit more stable, but their pipeline and quantity of products is still pretty high. Now, the, let's talk about the negative sides of Lego. Lego is a, is a flat-out kids thing. Right? Now, of course, look at me. Do I look like an adult? So, it is a toy. It is a straight-up toy. It is not a complex trading card game with tournaments and power levels and power creeps. And, you know, what's the tier one? What is the super net deck? This is Lego. Okay? Now, because of that, these are straight-up toys. Okay? They don't get stronger as they get older. Number two, these take up a lot of space. You need height of shelving, which you guys can't see above the camera, because I didn't want, I'm just doing a little intro video today. 
we can show a lot more that you're not, you're seeing probably about 5% of the Legos right now. They take up a lot of space. Now, compared to CCGs and sealed product in the card world, um, the space per dollar amount is very different. So, for example, if you have a whole shelf of, I don't even know, I guess a good example here is, let's pick on the Nintendo again. If you have a whole shelf of these Nintendos, each Nintendo is a couple hundred dollars, you could take up a ton of room, and it's only a couple thousand dollars worth of inventory. Where in the card world, if you've got collector boxes of Magic, which are this big, one inch thick, this big, and they're a couple hundred dollars a piece, you can literally put a million dollars in one section. So, the supply to the amount of capital you can deploy versus storage is a whole different formula. But, historically, Lego's appreciation tends to be pretty impressive. Now, again, now that it's becoming more mainstream, the free tendies are probably over with, which is probably why I'm making this video. No? Too soon? Wait, Rudy, are you trying to make money? Are you trying to manipulate another... Mar oh, my God. So, that's another negative thing. The next negative thing is, when you go to try to sell or deal on these type of products... When you're dealing with vintage, high-end Lego, okay, you recognize these neon yellow boxes. Anybody, again, we'll have a whole other video on this era. Anybody know what this era is? Factory seal, anybody know what this era? The golden age, again, of Lego. We'll have another conversation. We'll have more videos on it. And you guys know I'm a huge, huge fan of chess. The board game, right? Chess. So, when we talk about this stuff, there are certain things that are very, very special to me. And I mean very special. Like, I love things like this, okay? So there is a lot of interesting things and crossovers, and it kind of reminds me of the world of Weiss. <laughs> Have you played? Oh, crap. It reminds me a little bit of the world of Weiss, where Lego loves to do these crossover brands. So what you guys can't see behind the camera here is, like, over here we have the vintage retro section, Okay. Over here, we have Lego City. We have Creator 3-in-1. We have uh, Idea Series. We've got Adult Series, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Architect, uh, the Sculptures, the Bus. I don't know the fan of those. Uh, I kind of like the, a lot of the Chinese series. I'm, always, I'm kind of a big fan of a lot of these uh, different uh, Chinese series. I think they call them like Chinese New Year series. I'm not. I'm a, these, I'm a really big fan of those. They're, they're fun. They're great sets, man. Um, what do we got over here? Speed series. Don't tell anybody I do like cars. Um, and of course, obviously, the controversial Technic series, which tend to age and underperform a lot of the other series. Um, that's really about it for this intro video. I'm very curious to see what you all's comments are. Um, do you all want more videos on my perspective and what I'm doing in the world of Lego? Uh, is this too much of a deviation from the trading card world? Or simply put, Rudy, I will watch you talk about anything. If you talked about the art of a taco and making in your kitchen, I'd probably watch it. Don't give me any ideas. Um, but before we end this video, like I said, the Lego world's very complicated. Um, and don't forget, when you go to sell these things, guess what? You gotta pay eBay fees! And you got normal fees and all this stuff. And you know, you know, they don't tell you. you and not only that, a lot of the value in Lego, the vintage Lego sets, okay, is going to be in the sealed outer packaging. So, for example, we have an exclusive limited edition here, Ray Castaway series from Lego.com Corporate, how they give you special limited, special fancy series. A lot of the value is in these things being limited edition or factory sealed or original. These were free with purchase. And Lego does that with many other sets over the years. And if you, you know, you can't just throw this in a poly bag or a bubble mailer and get it beat up because you'll lose a lot of value. So there's a lot of things. Here's another, here's another good one. These uh, little limited exclusive sets from Lego Direct and everything. They usually don't sell in stores. They can get them in the Lego official stores. They have these special series they do over the years. A lot of those things I'm a really big fan of. I love unique little fun sets. And we can do a lot of videos on this regarding old versus new. Uh, big sets versus little sets. Different series. The City series. Ninjago series. I Monkey, Monkey, Monkey Kid, Monkey Island. Like the Ninjago series, once again, kind of the Asian series. I'm a huge fan. One of my favorite. They have these really cool temples and layers. Um, Home Alone series. The Simpsons. Ninjago. Car series. Um, but before we end the video, um, I just want to see everyone's opinion on this. Let me, 
I want to show you a few of the big things that I'm a real big fan of here, okay? So I'm going to show you guys a few other little small things. So for example, so stuff like this. This is a very old Lego horse, like White Knight, okay? Lego series, serial number 6008. 6008, that's it, okay? The date on this Lego series, little tiny thing right here. Um, the date, is there a date? 1995, okay. So this is 1995. Whew, really? Dang, that's old. Um, this was probably a couple dollars in 1995. Now, an unopened, undamaged box like this, that's small and simple like this, is probably 50 to to $100 a piece, okay? Now it gets even crazier. This, this is a 1995 Toyota Camry with one original owner, Batman. No, I'm kidding. This is the same thing, but this is what it looks like if you had the ability to get a factory sealed case of the White Knight horses that Toys R Us and distributors would ship these in. This is how Lego in the 90s would ship a factory sealed brick of these things. Pretty fucking awesome. Now, something like this, I've sold one of these, for example, okay? One, two, three, four, five, yes, six of these in here. So, like, for example, I sold one of these six months ago to a, a local private friend of mine, blah, 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 who's a big investor collector. And something like this would be 500 to a 1,000, like, almost, a, I, I probably wouldn't sell another one of these unless somebody was willing to pay over $1,000 for this. Yeah, you heard me. For six little horses that were a couple dollars a piece so these are probably on clearance for years ago for maybe two dollars so for twelve dollars for the horses i wouldn't sell i've only got two of these left or three of these left like i wouldn't sell this unless somebody was dumb enough to pay like one to two thousand dollars because i don't know how many are even left in existence it i mean going on ebay and just looking at a single lego 6008 factory sealed new I don't even know if there's 10 of these on the open market right now. So the amount of these that are left in case form is just mind-numbing. So it's just a good example I really wanted to uh, share with you guys. I don't know how much of a fan you guys are. And again, it gets to other things. Here you go. Here's a great example. Here's another one. 6031. This is a really cool... This is the Black Knight series with like a wizard from another... The Castle era. Okay. And this one actually has a Walmart clearance sticker from $10 to $5 to $4. And I actually left the sticker. I mean, I can mineral spirits and nail polish, but I can remove the sticker without damage. But I think the sticker adds, I just, it adds provenance. It's just so cool to know that. So there's a lot of things like that. Here's another one. Old sticker on it. Lego set, 6105. Black Knight with the guys with the swords and crossbows. Fucking awesome. I'm a little kid. And again, clearance, low price. A clearance on April of 2003 for $4. Like something like this. I would say this is probably going to be on the low side, maybe $50 to $100. Factory sealed 6105 this is probably a couple hundred dollars for something that was a couple dollars. So we have a lot of things in the open market that are very fascinating. So I'm going I'm to stop rambling here. This is supposed to be an intro video. I, don't, I could spend all day. There are insane amounts that you guys can't see above and below. Um, oh, I love these, man. Dude, these were so cool, man. Anybody remember, like, these Hawaiian... I the Islander series? 6262, man. You build the boats, pirates. You have, like, the island. Like, almost like the, the Caribbean or the Caribbean. Oh, man. And you'd have, like, all these, like, almost... I would almost say, like, I used to come when I was a kid. It was, like, an ancient Mayan thing and everything. Dude. It has, like, the maps and... Dude, when I was a kid, with, like, the Goonies and stuff. Dude, this Lego stuff, I was all about it, man. Sorry. Yeah, I can go on and on. There's... I could be here all night. This was an intro video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I've been wanting to do a Lego video for a very, very long time. Um, it's a really fascinating thing. And before I end this video, I do want to comment to you all. I know I just kind of focus a little bit on showing you guys some old stuff. But I want you all to understand that there is a lot of money in new Lego. Okay? Don't think you have to be in the 20, 30-year-old Rudy, you know, high baller, roll it. No, no, no. There's, there's uh what's a good example? I want to give you guys a good example. I don't know. I don't have a good example. I'll we'll have to do another video. 
there's a lot of, especially like the new Star Wars, Batmans, and honestly, I'm not personally a huge Disney fan. I'm not personally a huge, um, there's also the, uh, the Chick series, the, um, the, for the girls, the, uh, the Lego Friends series, like purple boxes and cute stuff, but there's a lot of money, and I have a pretty big position in the Lego Disney, in the Lego Friends series. It's kind of what I call kind of the chick flick kind of things, but some of the series are kind of fucking cool. I just don't say anything to you all, but not many of you all are watching this late. But there's a lot of opportunity in all of them, even if you're not, like, I'm not a huge Minecraft fan, okay? But some of the Minecraft series is very sought after. And as they get older, some of the older versions of Lego sets from Minecraft are going to be a big deal. Same thing with Harry Potter, Batman, certain movies. Uh, I think, what, Avatars and Avengers or Spider-Mans. And yeah, there's a ton of different crossover. I think there was, like, Marvel series. I think there's a lot of Marvel, like Avengers, uh, Overwatch, Eternals. Um, there's a lot of different sub-series. And just, in, in, just like we talk about in the card world. And just so we talk about the art, the oil painting world, and in the luxury watch world, the graded video games. Ooh, just because you're not a fan of certain things, doesn't mean you don't need to learn and under and just respect that particular market. And that's something that took me when I was younger. I was very you. They don't like that. But as I'm older, you know, just because I don't like, I'm not. It's not my favorite. Like I love the chess series and the you know, doesn't mean there's not opportunities in it. Um, oh, I gotta show you guys this one. I promise on the video. The Ninjago 71741. Bro, you guys gotta see this thing. Dude, it's fucking amazing, man. You build like this crazy. Dude, it's it's amazing. Sorry. Lego series, uh, yeah, 71741. It's just super cool. Alright, folks, that's my intro to Legos. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you like this kind of thing, I will do try to do some more Lego videos like once a month or something. I'm not gonna be able to get over to this location as frequently and again, but when I am over here. I want to share them and discuss kind of the knowledge and the market and everything. There's so much to discuss. There's so many things you could really go over. Oh, yeah, here you go. Here. Overwatch. Not an Overwatch fan. But we have a factory sealed Overwatch set. Uh, Lego set number 75976. What year is this? 2019. So this is only four years old. And I bet this $34 set, factory sealed, is probably not $30 anymore. How many pieces? This is probably a $20, $30 set in 2019. I bet it's nowhere near $20, $30. Anyways, folks, if you like this kind of thing, give me some feedback below. Do you want me to discuss the market of LEGO more? More than new LEGO sets? Do you want me to go into more vintage stuff? Do you want me to go into, like, kind of the market, the people that are involved? Who's buying this? What kind of rich rooties are out there? And give me, give me some feedback below if you guys like this stuff or if you want me to hone in on a certain subsection of the LEGO market. Like a certain LEGO series. Or a certain Lego era. or I'm, Again, we could have a whole channel devoted to just Legos. Okay? And again, I've thought about that in the past. But, you know, having a Lego channel. Having a card channel. Maybe a, a, a grading channel. Um, you know, a video game. And, you know, I've thought, I don't have time. You know, the original channel got so big. The Patreons and supporters from you all got so massive. The amount of card games and things just got crazy. But, you know, years ago, the original idea was to have... Like five or six different branded Alpha Investment channels for each type of category. But of course, the original Alpha Investments took off so much. And you all have been so kind to me and supporting over the years. And all the fun things we've done in the card world. You know, I never really shared with you all a lot of other things. So, thanks for watching. Um, very curious to see the LEGO uh, comments below. Uh, if you don't have anything to say, let me know you actually watched us to the end. Give me a hashtag like Rudy's Harry Lego or something. Give me... Give me a comment. I'm curious who actually watched a Lego video to the end. Have a beautiful day. Here's my penis.